Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Mrs. DVK. My name is Darlene, and I've been um, doing a Bible study on the life of Joseph in the book of Genesis. So far, we've already done two chapters, and today I'm going to do the third chapter, which is Genesis, the 40th chapter. And before we go into that, I want to share a, a Bible verse that I shared in, a, in my last video, Romans 8, 28, because I feel that this particular verse is so fitting to the story of Joseph. And it says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose and um, as we see different things that are going on in Joseph's life what we've went over so far um, we see that uh, these things are going to eventually work together for good and so we can apply the principles uh, of the life of Joseph to our life as well um, because God is no respecter of persons. And if he did it for Joseph, if he brought him through all of these hard things that he had to deal with, he can bring us through hard things that we have to deal with. And as we read the story, we will see that there was a purpose in every single thing that Joseph had to go through. And everything that he went through led to the next thing so it was like stepping stones he had to be in one place and then something had to happen there for him to get to the next place and then something had to happen there so it, it was like a progression going on in his life and um, many of the things that he was going through were not pleasant okay but we will see how they will end up for the good and we see that he loved the Lord because already when we read in the last chapter how Potiphar's wife was lusting after him and how she was after him day after day and how um, he stood up in integrity and he didn't want to sin against God he didn't want to do um, his master uh, Potiphar wrong so he had integrity um, he was faithful and even sometimes when we're faithful and we do the right thing like Joseph did, sometimes we suffer for doing the right thing. Joseph suffered for doing the right thing. He was placed in prison. But guess what? That's right where God wanted him to be in prison. And so that's where we left off in our last lesson. And so we're going to continue from there. Now, remember that Joseph was in the prison and uh, because he had favor from the Lord, um, the, the prison guard saw him and he uh, promoted him and he put him in charge of everything in the prison. Okay, so here Joseph is now in charge of the prison. So we're going to start reading. Genesis the 40th chapter and it says sometime later the king of Egypt's wine steward and his chief baker offended the king he was angry with these two officials and put them in prison in the house of the captain of the guard in the same place where Joseph was being kept they spent a long time in prison, and the captain assigned Joseph as their servant. One night, there in the prison, the wine steward and the chief baker each had a dream. And the dreams had different meanings. When Joseph came to them in the morning, he saw that they were upset. He asked them, why do you look so worried today? They answered, each of us had a dream, and there is no one here to explain what the dreams mean. 
It is God who gives the ability to interpret dreams, Joseph said. Tell me your dreams. So the wine steward said, In my dream, there was a grape vine in front of me with three branches on it. As soon as the leaves came out, the blossoms appeared and the grapes ripened. I was holding the king's cup. So I took the grapes and squeezed them into the cup and gave it to him. Joseph said, this is what it means. The three branches are three days. In three days, the king will release you, pardon you, and restore you to your position. You will give him his cup as you did before when you were his wine steward. But please remember me when everything is going well for you, and please be kind enough to mention me to the king and help me get out of this prison. After all, I was kidnapped from the land of the Hebrews, and even here in Egypt, I didn't do anything to deserve being put in prison. When the chief baker saw that the interpretation of the wine steward's dream was favorable, he said to Joseph, I had a dream too. I was carrying three bread baskets on my head. In the top basket, there were all kinds of baked goods for the king, and the birds were eating them. Joseph answered, This is what it means. The three baskets are three days. In three days, the king will release you and have your head cut off. Then he will hang your body on a pole and the birds will eat your flesh. On his birthday, three days later, the king gave a banquet for all his officials. He released his wine steward and his chief baker and brought them before his officials. He restored the wine steward to his former position, but he executed the chief baker. It all happened just as Joseph had said, but the wine steward never gave Joseph another thought. He forgot all about him. And that's Genesis, the 40th chapter. So I'm going to share some points on that. So we see here that, again, I think I had mentioned in one of my other videos how God had given um, Joseph the ability or the gift to interpret dreams because remember he interpreted his own dreams when he had those two dreams and he shared them with his brothers and his mother and his father but Joseph's attitude was a little bit different than when he shared his dreams he had a little bit of it, it appeared that he had a little bit of arrogance about him when he was uh, sharing those dreams and letting his brothers know that one day they were going to bow down to him and now it seems that things are beginning to shift for Joseph because here he is in a place um, far, far away from home. Um, he's going through all of these different challenges um, and trials and, and things. And, and, and I think it's kind of humbling him. And uh, when you think about it, sometimes we have to go through things for God to humble us because when he uses us we need to be in a humble position we don't need to be high and mighty and proud when God uses us okay we, we should be grateful that God sees fit to use us for his glory and so Joseph is going through the, this these humbling phases Okay, and so here he's telling them when they when they say they had the dreams, he's saying, doesn't God give the interpretation for dreams? Here he is giving God the credit. 
for the ability to be able to interpret their dreams. And he tells them, just tell, tell me the dreams. And he's going to tell them what their dreams meant. And we see throughout the scriptures that um, dreams are important and God uses dreams. Um, even in the story of Joseph, we see Joseph's dreams, the two dreams. Then we see the baker and the wine steward's dreams. Later on, we're going to hear about the Pharaoh's dreams. Okay. There were other dreams in the Bible that God used. Um, the famous Jacob's ladder or Jacob's stairway dream. Okay. King Nebuchadnezzar had dreams that, uh, Daniel, interpreted. Daniel was another person in the Bible who was also an interpreter of dreams that God had given him the ability to be able to do that. Um, and then we see other stories of dreams in the Bible. If you remember Mary and Joseph, uh, when Mary found out that she was pregnant and Joseph found out that she was pregnant, they were engaged to be married. And Joseph was actually going to put her away. In other words, he was going to divorce her and not marry her. Um, but an angel came to him in a dream and told him to marry Mary because the baby that she had conceived was of the Holy Spirit. And God spoke to Joseph four times in dreams. Okay. Um, he also spoke with him uh, when Herod wanted to kill Jesus. And uh, an angel in a dream that Joseph had told them to leave and go to Egypt. And then after that, the angel in a dream told him to go back to Israel. And then the last dream, the angel told him to settle in Galilee. Also remember the uh, Magi when they came to visit uh, the baby Jesus. Um, they went to, uh, Herod had called for them because uh, Herod was basically jealous and he was going to put Jesus to death. And he told them uh, when they found Jesus to come back to him and let him know where Jesus was because he pretended like he was going to go and worship Jesus also. But God warned the Magi in a dream after they found baby Jesus and they worshiped him and they gave him their gifts. Um, an angel in a dream told them, do not go back to Herod. So these are different things that we see throughout the Bible, how God uses dreams. I believe he uses dreams today. I don't believe that um, he uses dreams as often as some people say that he does. Um, some people will say that they're, they're having constant dreams from God. Um, every week I had a dream from the Lord and the Lord told me this and and then the next week I had a dream from the Lord and he told me that. Um, he didn't operate like that throughout the scriptures. So um, it's kind of hard to reconcile that and to, to say that he operates like that now. Um, the scriptures say God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if the prophets and um, the patriarchs, if they didn't have dreams on a consistent basis, um, it's, I don't believe that God deals like that now with dreams on consistent basis, but I do believe that he deals with people um, through dreams, okay? And so um, we see that uh, when he interpreted these dreams, okay, he told the wine steward that uh, his dream meant in three days, uh, pretty much that he was going to be restored to being a wine steward for the Pharaoh. And then it, the Bible tells us that after the baker heard uh, the interpretation of the wine steward's dream and that it was favorable, then he wanted the interpretation of his dream. Um, and we find out that once he got that interpretation from Joseph, it was not favorable. And um, I've taught this lesson sev several times. Um, and I remember one time teaching this in a um, Sunday school. And um, 
I was letting them know that even when, even, even the little small details, God is using that. Um, because if, God, if Joseph had have interpreted um, the baker's dream first, and it was not favorable, then the wine steward would not have wanted his dream interpreted. But he had to interpret the wine stewards first, and then that way the baker was open to having his dream interpreted. And this was because we had to see later on that the interpretations of both of their dreams did come true and the wine steward had to know that as well because later on he's going to admit that Joseph interpreted their dreams and that they came true so one of the students said God is in the details and he is no matter how small or insignificant something may appear to be God is can use it. He can use it. He used the order of these uh, dream interpretations, okay? And so we see that um, as we get to the end of the chapter, chapter 40, how um, once these dreams came to pass, the interpretation of them came to pass, and the, uh, the baker was executed, and the wine steward was restored, the scripture tells us that the wine steward forgot about Joseph. Okay, um, sometimes we go through things in life where we do good deeds, we do, we try to do people right, and it just seems like they forget all about what we have done. But it's okay, because God hasn't forgotten, okay? God has not forgotten um, your, your labor of love. And when you bless people, he hasn't forgotten that. Again, even though the wine steward forgot Joseph, it wasn't his time then. It wasn't his time. It wasn't the wine steward's time to tell the Pharaoh about Joseph. Because if you think about it, what would the Pharaoh care he, he, he didn't have a dream that needed to be interpreted. He had his, um, at that time, pharaohs had their magicians and they had their dream interpreters and they had all of those types of things. So th that probably would have been insignificant to the pharaoh at that time when the wine steward was released if he had mentioned Joseph to him. But when it was time, we will see then the wine steward mentioned Joseph, and it was the perfect timing. God does things in perfect timing. And so I hope that this uh, chapter, Genesis chapter 40, was a blessing to you. Um, thank you so much for stopping by and um, watching the video, and you be blessed.